Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Gotta take my sunglasses off while I'm chatting with you. In fact, uh, I was out picking. The sunglasses I was just wearing are 1950s Ray-Bans, found those. Um, it's been another adventure out looking through garages and yards and back alleys. Well, not back alleys without people wanting me there. <laughs> that would be sketchy. But I mean going down back alleys to go meet people. That sounds even worse. Anyway, I've been buying stuff. <laughs> I should just stop talking. I've been buying things uh, to resell for the purpose of reselling, which is what I do. And I just bought a uh, fellow's toy box that he's had sitting in his basement for years. I was kind of get excited because he's turns out the same age as my dad which means his toys are gonna to be from like the 1950s or 60s. I, maybe some stuff as your teenagers into the early 70s, I don't know, but we're gonna go through. Um, I bought some of his uh, daughter's toys too, because even they're collectible now, because people my age are old. <laughs> uh, that feels great when the toys you had are like in an antique store. I, I, I've been at that level for a while. In fact, I went to an antique store once and I found a Fisher Price uh, farm set from probably the 1980s or so uh, with the cardboard silo and the plastic. Anyway, you probably know you open the barn door and it goes moo. Well, I had one of those when I was a kid and I'll be darned if I didn't flip the thing over and had my name on the bottom of it. It was mine when I was a kid. Did I buy it? No, because I didn't need it then and I don't need it now. Um, but let's dig through somebody else's toys, somebody else's collectibles and see what's in the boxes. Okay, got back to the house with the stuff that I purchased this morning. Um, didn't even actually look through this box. Like I said, the, the fellow that I bought it from is like 70 years old. I figure if it's a box of his old toys, it's gonna be cool no matter what. So I'm gonna drag this thing over uh, to an open area. Uh, maybe I'll take it inside actually. Ah, I might take it inside and sort through it. We'll take it inside, we'll sort through it, and we'll see what's inside the box. Let's do a little unboxing video. There's a few things that were sitting on top like this Knickerbocker police shotgun. It's plastic, it's a cap gun, but it has actual little loading shells inside of it. I'll take this stuff in. Uh, the things that you can see on the surface look cool already, so I'm actually pretty excited to go through this box. Okay. Most car guys <laughs> would probably not be super proud having a Barbie car in their car. Maybe they would, I don't know. Who am I to judge? But this is a Jag XJS convertible. And it's a Barbie Jag XJS convertible. Well, that's a pretty fancy Barbie car. Pretty neat. It's massive, actually. If you had an, a Jag XJS, there's probably not a better way to get a giant miniature of your car. This is pretty cool. Move the box out of the way. The Mickey Mouse Mouseketeer. Is it a guitar or a ukulele? Let's find out. Well, it's a little ukulele, but look, it still has the... Uh, still has the cardboard instructions for playing songs in there. It has the Mouseketeer uh, flap that was missing off the end of the box. And even this little sticker, the Mickey Mouse Club sticker is still in the box. The only thing it seems to be missing is a couple strings. Other than that, that's very, very complete. Let's see, does it have a date on it? I'm gonna guess from the 50s somewhere, somewhere in there. Oh, something's floating around inside. Oh, the pick. Look, the guitar pick is inside there too. It's complete. And the box is always worth just as much having that original box. Um, with the box like this, that's probably worth around $125 Canadian, maybe like around $100 US. Really neat set. And the theme continues with the Hudson's Bay stuff. The last couple of videos I found Hudson Bay items. Um, this, however, is a really old Hudson Bay, probably, you know, turn of the century wooden box, wooden crate that held Duco finish shotgun shells for 12 gauge shotgun, smokeless shells. It's got all its original stamps on it. And uh, there are many people who collect old shotgun boxes like that. But inside, part of the reason why I bought this was what was inside. 
an original American Indian made, it says. Yellowstone National Park drum. It's, you know, gotta be right from the 50s or 60s and looks like the darn thing's never been used. We have a Dennis the Menace travel kit. Didn't even know they made such a thing. With little miniature cloth and toothpaste and a toothbrush, palm olive soap and a comb. <laughs> Wonder why it was never used. You'd think that at some point somebody would have said, go, go use your toothbrush from that Dennis the Menace kit. And they never did. That's gotta be a pretty, I mean, maybe not super valuable, but fairly rare. And there's the actor who played Dennis the Menace on TV. We've got some pennants. And where are they from? When are they from and where are they from? Wolf Cubs, Seattle World's Fair. Banff, Souvenir of Jasper. These are all places around us. There's one more I fell on the floor down here. And White Horse Yukon. A few little things. This tire used to be, um, it used to be an, an ashtray, but um, the ashtray part's missing. Uh, my friend Kelly, who builds quarter scale race cars, which is like tiny little race cars, uses these as the tires for his race cars. So. Maybe he'll still have a use for something like that. Let's see what else is in here. Davy Crockett horn. A little dinky toy Austin Healy boat. And an itsy bitsy Snow White playing card set. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Manufactured in Canada. Pretty neat. Okay, that's just the that's just the surface stuff. Now to actually get inside the box and to do that, I'm going to take it inside the house. Well, although the box says basement auto equipment extension cords, I've been assured that it's full of the gentleman's old toys. So we'll start with the one on top. Oh well, there's toys. Not. That's not necessarily old, that's more from my generation. But let's see what's in the Hudson Bay bag here. We have a Cox airplane, it looks like. This is older for sure. Let me get this out of the box. Or out of the bag, I should say. Yeah, look, that's a Mustang, North American Mustang, powered by an 18,000 RPM gas engine. So this is a tether plane. Uh, maybe some of you remember having one. If you've not seen one before, you have a little handle with a string, basically. You pump this up with gas, get it going, and it actually flies, and you spin it around on the end of a string. Try not to whack your parents in the head or other people in the park <laughs> that are walking around. Looks like it's got its instructions, the instruction booklets. Is this the... Some extra little bits and pieces. It's all there though. Okay, well, first first thing right off the top is looking pretty promising. We'll set that aside. We'll set it off to the side and we'll keep digging. Okay, Brio. I mean, it's a good quality train set system. It's the original system, kind of like Thomas the Tank Engine. Brio was expensive. These are from the 1980s, probably early 80s. We got 23 bucks, so I was $24 for a little accessory set, just two curve pieces. When you're at a yard sale next and you come across that stuff, it was expensive, new. You know, Brio was very, was very expensive, new. You know, that's probably $100 of retail in 1980s prices there. Let's see what's in the chocolate box. Let's hope it's something sweet. <laughs> Let's open it up. Oh, more Jello coins. A lot of them. Okay, and again, the ones that are going to have a little bit more value would be the hockey players, um, just because they're associated with the person. I mean, I would have tried to collect. I love old European cars, so I would have collected stuff like that. But let's see. You know, when you get like um, Hall of Famers, Gordie Howe, stuff like that. They have a little bit more value. 
let's hope that there's a bunch of hockey in here or sports figures. These would have come again in uh, your Jello or uh, in this case, Hostess potato chips. Um, it was a big rage right around 1961 to 64. This is what kids were getting as a sort of a premium. I'll dig through all of that after and I'll see how many hockey figures we get. Oh, look, there's a little card saying to collect all the aircraft wheels. That's off the back of the pudding box or whatever that was. Cool. Oh. Always with an elastic band. I'm surprised it still stretches. Look, that rubber's so old, it's it's brittle. It's about to go. I wonder if that's the whole set. This is a CFL card set. Probably from the early 1970s, maybe late 60s. Let's have a look. Let's take the elastic off. Okay. Is this card number one? Nope. 25. Oh, I see. They're not in order. 36. Well, I might actually have to sort through these and see how close this is to a set. It looks like there's no rhyme or reason here as to uh, whether it's a complete set. Oh, there's the... Okay, so it's going to be from 1970 because the last year for Canadian Player of the Year was 1969. So this would be a 1970, hopefully a near complete set. I'll find out. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of cards. That's enough to make a whole set. Uh, it's another shoebox. Okay. And what's in the shoebox? It is a little kid's cowboy set. So you've got the, uh, you've got your kid's chaps and your kid's vest and your kerchief. Why this was a little cowboy. This is probably set up right for like maybe a six year old or something. Really nice too. I think that's actual hide. <laughs> that is a nice little set. Was not expecting that inside the box. I hope there's going to be some cap guns in here too. We have an old Woodward's department store bag and inside appears to be a clock made out of Meccano. Okay. Here's the instructions for it. Yeah, I guess this was a build your own clock kit with pendulum and the whole works. Never seen that one before. But it's pretty neat that it's all got its paperwork and stuff. Bring that out and set it down. Uh, oh. Whoa, look at this. It's an original Mattel Bolts of Thunder Burp box. I don't know if the gun is inside of it. These are really cool. They look like a little Tommy gun. <laughs> Go get them, sport. Let's see. Is I've never actually seen one of these with the original box before. And oh, it's it's in there. It's stuck. There, there it is. An original Mattel Thunder Burp machine gun with the original box. That is probably like a $250 toy in that kind of condition. I'm, I'm no kidding, like you never ever see these things in that kind of shape. In fact, you rarely ever see them. Well, maybe 250 is a little high. I'll have to check it out, but I would expect around a couple hundred bucks for sure. I had one of these loose before and I think it went for around 150. So to have the box is gonna add a lot of value and it's in pristine looking condition too. That is fantastic. We'll set that right over there. Set that guy right there. Let's see, what's in the wooden box? Is it Meccano? It's an orange box, Mandarin oranges. Oh, it's toys. We have a Nike missile rocket set. Soars high up in the air, parachute opens, and missile floats smoothly to earth. Well, that's pretty neat. A little rocket set, and the rocket is in the box. We have a little dinky toy. Dodge Royal Sedan. That's about it's very similar in age to the Plymouth Wagon I have. A little bit older. It's in really good shape, though. And a nice old farm set. 
Massey Harris. This is probably really early Ertl stuff. And it's got all the implements and accessories. Oh, there's more. Oh no, those I thought those were more of the Jello coins. Those are just like poker chips or something. Yeah, it's a complete little farm set right there. That's pretty nice. Finding lots of fun stuff. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I gotta get down to that. That's gonna be one of those big. Ooh. This box is not very stable on the bottom. What do we have in the Sears box? It is a train set. It's a train set in the Sears box. But what brand of train set? Boy, this kid had all the cool toys. Electric or battery operated? Keywind? What is it? It's mechanical. Oh, it's it's a it's a keywind. I was gonna say there was no electrical pickup on it. Look, it still wants to go. Nice antique. Well, I shouldn't say antique. Vintage keywind toy train set with all the original cars, which appear to be in nice shape underneath all this track. Let's get the track out of the way. It even has a little train house there. Who made this set though? Like you'd think it would say somewhere on it who the manufacturer was. It's kind of blurred. Made in Germany, US zone. Could be Markland maybe. US zone, that would be right after the war, or right around 1946 or so. Oh, there's the tender for it. Let's see, what does it say? That one's a little clear. No, it just says made in US zone, Germany. A German made train set. Really, really nice condition. Look at the shape of that. It's basically like brand new in here. Even the Sears box is in good shape. <laughs> cool. But what I wanted, what I saw at the bottom of this box, there's a triang set. Ooh, it's a big one too. It's heavy. I'm gonna have to set the camera down because I can use both hands on that one. This had some actual weight to it. Let's see what's inside. It is, oh, well, there's where the weight's coming from, the transformer. And a little engine. You know what? I don't think this is trying. This doesn't look like the, the proper... Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, I guess it is. It's not a very fancy trying set. It's a plastic set. But it's all there. I'm probably more excited by the, um, by the mechanical German tin plate set, to be honest with you. But that's still a neat set. That'll do well. You know, we'll put it through auction. There's lots of people who collect trains and train sets. So to have the box like this is kind of nice. Here's the one I spotted at the bottom of the box. I was actually kind of excited to look at this one. This would date to the 1950s. Line, it's heavy. I feel, I'm almost guaranteeing it's going to be in here. If it's a bunch of rocks, I'll be disappointed. I mean, the box is still good either way. Um, these are battery operated, so the barrel would lows and low, lower and raise. Why can't I talk? I must be excited. Okay. And there it is. In all of its glory, that's the battery cover. Even has the little rocket still on it. Those are always missing. They're little rubber rockets because it actually shoots. And you can kind of control it it's got your buttons on the back there i wonder if the thing works i wonder if i have d cell batteries it's always d cell batteries on these old toys i wonder if it still works i'm gonna go dig downstairs and see if i've got some batteries well i had the batteries i don't know if they're any good we'll find out well i've got the batteries in but i don't see anything happening it's not uncommon for an old toy like this to have a little bit of, you know, issue. Oh, look. I think that's supposed to be able to move it. Most of the features on this aren't battery operated, though. The firing mechanism, mechanical. Boo-boo! Friction drive on the front end. So the only thing I guess that would have been mechanical would be this little, this little pivoting turret here. Even then, it looks like this, this gear lever does it. Well, whatever it's meant to do, it's not doing right now. 
but it is still a really cool piece, especially to have the original box with it too. Well, that was a fun box to go through. I think my favorite pieces from today are the Cox Airplane, the Mickey Mouse Keteer guitar, and I don't know, the Thunderbird gun, the train, I don't know. I'm kind of getting to like everything. <laughs> That's the problem. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, when this stuff goes up for sale, I'll let you know. We'll likely put it through our June auction sale that we're doing as we're doing a big auction then. Um, but lots of fun stuff today. I've got to clean up the upstairs here. It's my wife's birthday today, Melissa's birthday. I'm sure she doesn't want to have all this all over our um, upstairs dining room or upstairs coffee table. <laughs> Back to work I go. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.